Thanks, everybody, for having me, and thanks for allowing me to let you know about these um, two words, this refrain that I think can also be a powerful tool, not only. I think of it as a formula to acknowledge translations across worlds, and most importantly, to signal the limits of the translations across worlds to signal what exceeds what we can understand, what we can get when we're talking across worlds. Okay, so I'm going to read these uh, four pages and I'm going to try and do it slowly, uh, which is not my habit, um, for us to really feel what not only can do. So, not only. This is a very frequent phrase used in analysis when we refer to a plurality of things, two or more, more than one, a plurality of things that occur simultaneously or in a sequence. I learned to give this phrase a post-plural post-plural conceptual balance from my conversations with Mariano Turpo, a friend and a mentor with whom I collaborated the ideas that came into the book I published uh, sort of long ago now in 2015, the title of which is Earth Beings, Ecologies of Practices Across Worlds. Uh, a Quechua speaker and a commuter across some of the worlds that make what Mariano and I call our country, that is Peru. Mariano would insist that what to me was, for example, a mountain, was not only that. And it was possible that I could eventually not know what it not only was. To accept that eventuality, I patiently labored my own scholarly habits to let go of two scholarly convictions. They had to move my head. First, the two scholarly condition, convictions were, first, that I knew what we were talking about, a mountain, of course, and second, that my questions to Mariano would elicit responses after which I would know what I did not know before the conversation. For example, if I did not know what Elsa Mountain was before I elicited Mariano's explanations, once he explained, I would know, I would know what he was talking about. This required me to work on my own habits of thought. And fieldwork also became about me. You know, anthropologists go to the field to know about the other. In this case, fieldwork also became about me and how I know. It was not only about the other. Um, coming to terms with what was not only that which emerged through my habitual practice of thought, in addition to taking time, required working at a permanent interface where Mariano's world in practices and mine were both seemingly alike and at the same time different. Alike and different. And what emerged at, at, at that interface, rather than the entity or practice in question, was an awareness of our concepts and practices, Mariano's and mine, frequently exceeding each other as they also overlapped. So we could understand and our concepts, our mutual concepts also exceeded what we could both understand. Not only signal translation, note a conversation was a translation, as a practice that allowed for conversation while also insinuating its limits, thus evoking a possibility for what the same translation that allowed communication could not contain. So basically, aware, it 
uh, allowed for awareness of what exceeded us without knowing what that access was about. Signaling the limits of translation not only also suggested itself as an, eth an ethnographic tool to displace analytics, categories, arguments, grammars that appeared unable to allow the conditions that I intuited or was told were not only what to me were. And as not only suggested uh, its work of displacement, it created possibilities to re-describe those conditions that then appear different from, but still connected to what, who or how had initially been to me, for example, a mountain. So the mountain did not disappear. I just allowed it to be other than what it was to me, a mountain, without necessarily knowing what that other was. Um, I've just mentioned the word displacement and redescription, and I borrow these two terms as ethnographic practices, that is, as ethnographic tools from Merlin Strathern. I also tweak her concepts a bit to make them useful for what I call ontolo the ontological openings that may result from a disposition to co-labor, to be in thought with the situation at hand. Displacement results from being aware of our practice of categories, concepts, or analytics as they may overpower, perhaps even kidnap the situation that is up for description. Strathern calls what results from this ethnographic practice a better description, one that also indicates without capturing the limits and therefore excesses to the displaced categories or practices, which while present cannot further explain away the situation in question. So I have mountain, but mountain does not explain away earth being as a person. The situation remains open to a better description and these without closure for that better description may be not only what it also is. So I can describe better a mountain by saying not only such, but that not only which better describes a mountain. I don't know what it is. Thus, not only allows for representation and also suggests its displacement. Not only was inspired as the crossroads remote from usual imagination where the life and words of Mariano Turpo made my, reading, my readings of philosopher Isabel Stengers and particularly her cosmopolitics, her notion of cos cosmopolitics, enabling the practice of ethnography at the interfaces of what is both the same and not. For example, my world and Mariano's condition of world multiple simultaneously distinct and historically coordinated into singularity, not only may be a formula to perform what I'm proposing as ontological openings, a proposal to think that as they become through enactments, anything, events, relations, practices, entities might be other than what they also are. A tool for partial connections, and this is reference term in conversation with Donna Haraway, not only is a formula to add known, sorry, not only is not a formula, <laughs> I had to clarify, not only is not a formula to add known possibilities, that's why it's not a formula to pluralize. Uh, it's not a formula to add. That's why I said it's a, I learned to give it close, post plural meaning. So it's not a formula to add known possibilities. For example, as in not only happy, also unhappy, or to denote two conditions combined into a third one, not only black, also white, and thus mulatto. Those are pluralizing forms in which you can also use not only, but uh, that's not the way I'm using it. Or to make a list of things that might eventually be completed, like adding, adding, adding into a list. That's not how I'm using not only. Instead, 
Like Mar Mariano's challenge to me and as Instengri's proposal, my intent with not only is to slow down our practice of knowing, events, relations, practices, entities. Is slowing down our knowing habits not only indicates a potential emergence that could challenge what we know, the ways we know it, and even suggest the impossibility of our knowing without such impossibility canceling the emergence. Not only works with the empirical, also to open it up beyond its limits to what may, may be in a different mode, not empirical, without evidence, not with evidence, so not empirical, and without its binary opposite theory. That's not only it indicates that the empirical and its counterpart, abstract theory, are not the only conditions for the emergence of entities, relations, or practices. In so doing, not only arrests the analytical urge to cancel the eventfulness of relations, practices, or entities that do not meet the empirical conditions that modern epistemology currently requires to abstract, to abstract knowledge from its objects. Practicing not only we may attend to what is or may emerge beyond the limit of epistemic knowledge, and that exceeds the way we know. Different from knowing, attending in the previous sentence means acquiescing without requirements to the being of something, not imposing requirements, but just attending to its possibility without us capturing it and imposing the requirements that we need to think when something is. Not long ago, Brazilian anthropologist Eduardo Ribeiros de Castro called my attention to a phrase that Claude Lévi-Strauss used throughout the volumes of Mythologiques. The phrase is senempatu. That is not all. And with it, Lévi-Strauss practices the relentless work of structural analysis in, analysis in which what objects are is never settled, for they emerge within a system of transformations whose limits are always relational and thus unclosed. The work of not only as suggested by Mariano appears uncannily similar to Senepatu and also different. Both phrases operate like keys. They open and close possibilities. However, the will behind those keys is different and so is what they open and close. Cinema tool is a tool that constantly opens possibilities of transformations in the analysis of a large body of myths in order to close them into a system on, of connections and thus know them, to know the myth. As Rivello de Castro explains in Mital, and I'm quoting him now, in Mythologique, uh, Levi Strauss repeatedly insists on the closure, la clôture, la clôture of the system he analyzes on the roundness of myth mythology's earth, the completeness of the circle that takes him from the savannas of central Brazil to the foggy coasts of Washington state and British Col Columbia, as well as on the same several cultures of the sub mythical groups within that circuit. Like Senempatu, not only also closes, but it, what it closes is the conception even the hope that there is an all, a two, a circuit, for example, as in the case, a circuit, for example, not a circle, a circuit, for example, as in the case of myths, that can be captured by ethnographic knowledge. So there is not all that can be captured by ethnographic knowledge. Allowing for divergence from modern epistemic knowledge, while also being with it, not only like the levi Strauss concept indicates that nothing is everything or that completeness is. So it indicates that completeness is not. <laughs> Yet it also calls attention to what itself calls the complete everything, the forces and practices that, that translate many worlds, world multiple, into the singularity of the one world 
the round, roundness that images of the earth represents. I'm not saying that the earth is not. Of course it is. But the completeness uh, that the images of its representation suggest is what is not. Not only indicates the excesses of such translation, even if these excesses have not been confirmed through empirical evidence. If one of the characteristics of world multiple is that singularity is also its condition, one of the tasks of not only is to make singularity an ambiguous condition, one that can be other than what it also is, and therefore unsettle the imposition of singularity over multiplicity while maintaining its possibility. Here, when I talk about world multiple and its singularity, I'm alluding to Anne-Marie Mont's body multiple and its singularity. That book was published, I think, in the year 2000, and it has become a classic. It certainly has helped me to think uh, very much. So not only may thus, may thus perform as a conceptual tool for a decolonial analysis of the dynamic of the world being more than one and less than many, a decolonial analysis of the dynamic in, through which the world is more than one and less than many, and yet it's also made one. That dynamic requires us to think about ontological politics, political ontology. Interrupting the imposition and working to open possibility beyond its modern epistemic limits, not only is an analytical formula to attend to marginalized and even deemed impossible intra-relationalities. In closing, I'm getting to the end, I want to make two points that might appear scholarism about the current use of ontology as analytics. The first uh, criticism is that, or the first my rejoinder against that criticism is that rather than a tool to turn away from culture, to leave culture behind, the ontological openings that not only may perform are mindful of Roy Wagner's idea that anthropology's invention of culture created the conditions whereby, and I'm quoting Roy Wagner here, we incorporate them in our reality, and so incorporate their ways of, ways of life within our self-invention. And I want to emphasize that Wagner's idea suggests both that neither way of life, theirs or ours, is without the other, and that ethnographic practice may allow this awareness, including awareness of the ways in which our self-invention incorporates their way of life. And these, I think, allows for us to think, I just said us, <laughs> allows us to think others within us and to therefore make the us other distinction decolonial because it's also us. It doesn't mean that this us overpowers them, but it does mean that we are not without them. They are not without us. We are interconnected. And in this, in, in this interconnection, there are excesses that make for the heterogeneity within the us. It makes for a complex we in which there is other, and there is us, but the other and us are interchangeable as subject positions and their successes between both. Alertness to such complex junctures may offer ethnographic sites with analytical room for the possibility of entities, mountains as earth beings, that is, as persons, for example, to emerge in divergence from what to what is to us nature or sacred, sacred mountains, for example, while also being with it. So it doesn't, this 
it displaces, but it doesn't replace. It displaces, and with that, I mean that it continues to be in conversation with it, but it suspends its conquering position that allows for mountains, for example, to overwhelm Earth being, cancel its possibility. My second and final point, and this I'm uh, with this I'm ending, is intended to appease concerns about the risks to analytical depoliticization that, that come with ontological analysis. And to make this point, I want, I need to go back to the event that provoked all this thinking in me. The stage was the main square of Cusco, the capital of the Inca Empire, in um, Peru, and the time was 2006. The event was a demonstration against the possibility of an open pit mine that would destroy Ausangate, the main earth being of this very vast region. The controversy was about extractivism, and I don't know how, um, how familiar or how present, not familiar, how present is that word in Europe? But in Latin America, it is a extremely ubiquitous human geological force. And in fact, it is through extractivism that what is known in general as the Anthropocene makes itself present in, in Latin America. And it makes itself present with a might that destroys entities and all the relations that emerge from where the entities emerge. So extractivism has, ironically, um, the latest um, historical moment in the might to extract natural resources because precisely of its might, which is a historical might, it is totally contemporaneous, has made possible the public presence of complaints against the destruction of entities that history cannot prove and that therefore I call a historical. So my point of irony is that this historical force that we call extractivism has made possible the public emergence of a historical entities. So against the destruction of extractivism, environmentalists have joined indigenous claims to, um, to make their rights public the rights to indigenous rights to well-being, their, their territories, and their culture, and their sacred lands. Uh, and while obviously very, with lots of difficulty, these claims achieve some of their goals against destruction. It's difficult, but the alliance with environmentalism has worked to deter extractivists extractivism, destructive might. But this is something that I want to end with because it is extremely important. Um, environmentalism belongs to the genealogy of nature. And it may also coordinate many worlds into one, the world multiple into singularity without allowing its multiplicity. Environmentalism can transpire through the material semiotic field of culture. And what this means is that it can make practices with earth beings into cultural beliefs. And thus, environmentalist defense of nature may perform a disregard of circumstances in which nature is not only such. 
And in these cases, environmentalism could assert the onto epistemic practice that cancels world in practices that do not make themselves through the modern division between nature and humans. And environmentalism may thus need an agreement, in agreement, the coloniality of those environmentalists oppose, the proponents of extractivism in any of its versions. Not only is a tool, not only that two word phrase is a tool that may open room for hesitation among environmentalists, is a tool for environmentalists to be able to pose a question to themselves. Am I sure nature is only such? Can it be not only such? And then uh, that hesitation can become a matter of political discussion that being aware of in its ontological dimension cannot dismiss without consequences the power of the world made through nature only to destroy that which is not only nature. So not only is a tool for all of us to think, it is a tool, it's basically a tool to think beyond what we know is. And it can become a political tool to open room for political ontology, to think that the world that we know is not only the world, it's not one, that perhaps there's multiplicity and that this multiplicity can emerge. And if we turn that multiplicity into sing singularity, we can become aware that we are turning it into sing singularity. Okay, thank you. <laughs>